Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and today is a day for new charging providers. So I was just at ChargeNet, their new location at the Taco Bell um, here in South San Francisco and I couldn't get the tritium units working. It wasn't a big deal though because I was planning on coming here anyway. Now EV Range is a company that I've been wanting to, you know, check out one of their sites for. I've been wanting to, to see what they're up to. And um, they were started by a former uh, site designer for Recargo. So before EVGo um, purchased Recargo, uh, this person, uh, Carl, had been working as a site designer for them. So I met him at that Ricargo Prunedale site, the really excellent uh, Ricargo Prunedale site with the big, uh, you know, visual graphic displays, everything. Like, I, I still love that site to this day. It's, it's since been updated, um, but it was a great initial site design. We had high hopes for Ricargo. It seems like their priorities went elsewhere. They didn't uh, fulfill a lot of their California Energy Commission grant funding for the sites that they had, you know, commissioned or planned to build out. So that was all unfortunate, and then they were uh, taken over by EVGo. But uh, they started a lot of the older personnel from uh, Ricargo, who were, were, I think, largely responsible for that uh, Prunedale uh, charging site, they decided to form their own company called EV Range. Now, I don't know if it's the most compelling uh, name for a charging company, but it, it gets the message across, right? These are chargers that are designed to enable you to drive farther in your EV, right? To provide you with additional EV range. And they have placed a pretty big emphasis on high powered charging. So this current site that I'm in uh, at a Holiday Inn Express, I stayed here last night. I, I didn't, but yeah, you know the commercials. Anyway, it's uh, two 350 kilowatt BTC high power chargers. So these are really powerful units, basically the fastest currently available. There are only two here though, um, but that's still, you know, a good option considering we're like right next to a McDonald's, um, you know, just off of the San Francisco airport. So this is another option. The thing is, there's a lot of these EV range sites that are going in and I think locations that will maybe be better for travel. So when I was in Soledad on uh, Highway 101, stopping at the Electrify America charger, I noticed a new charger going in there. I didn't know who was responsible for it. Well, it was EV Range. And that charging site has since gone online. But if you look at where EV Range is placing a lot of their charging sites, they are in areas that facilitate travel. So along Highway 101, they're putting one in along Highway 395. Right, this one here in, in San Francisco is maybe more of a centrally located one, uh, but it's still a good charger, good charging service. Now, um, one thing that they didn't carry over from a cargo that I would love to have seen them do instead, uh, their, their credit card payment reader worked great. The problem is these are high power chargers with the Huber Plus Sooner cables, so as an older Bolt EV owner, I have to support that cable. And so there's, it's really tricky to get the timing where I can put my card in, have it read, authorize the payment, pull the card out, um, and then lift the cable. So the order of operations, I feel like they screwed up. Originally, Recargo, you would put your credit card information in and then it would start a counter and you had a minute and 30 seconds to plug in the car and activate the charger. Here you have to plug in first, then you put in your payment and then it will initiate the charger. So that's a little bit, in my opinion, it's less than ideal, especially if you're in an older EV, like an older Chevrolet Bolt EV, where you have to support that CCS charging cable as you're initiating the charging session. But either way, I'm not gonna do a full on site review for this. 
Um, frankly, it wouldn't score necessarily high uh, just because of the, the low number of units. Um, you know, this is almost more of a charger for this hotel or motel, right? You pull in with a high power charging EV, um, say you, Kia EV6, you plug in, you go into the lobby, register your room, everything else, get your keys, check in. By the time you come back out to your car, you're at 80, 90% full again, and then you just go park and don't even think about it anymore, right? This is like, the, and you can cycle through a lot of guests this way if you have really high power chargers. And for the slower charging EVs, you'd probably rather be charging overnight on a level two AC, it's gonna be cheaper. Um, and it's just, in my opinion, a little bit more convenient. So I would still look at this maybe more as, as just a um, destination opportunity fast charger, but it is two 350 kilowatt chargers with both CCS and a 100 kilowatt um, Chatamo head on here as well. So it's just a very basic site, but I think EV range is maybe just getting these sites out there right now, getting their toe in the water, probably searching for funding, getting that sort of thing going. Um, and, you know, I would say don't overlook them as a charging provider because uh, they have a lot of actual experience already in site design, uh, procuring uh, um, equipment, contracting, uh, getting, you know, sites designed, permitted, laid out, uh, coordinating with uh, funding from you know state local uh, governments so don't don't uh, overlook EV range as a you know potential future player especially if we start to see more of these federal infrastructure grants and um, more of these state grants for for charging infrastructure um, I, I mean like I said I could nitpick some things but is it much of an issue with my car as it is with their their uh, hardware probably. But also I noticed something too. These are listed as 350 kilowatt chargers. However, uh, they're also listed as 350 amp. So this means that they're only really 350 kilowatt chargers for basically 900 volt cars. And there aren't a whole lot of them, right? The, the Lucid Air would be one that might be able to start approaching. Whereas something like the GMC Hummer EV, it relies heavily on that 500 amp service. And because it's charging at like 700 volts, this charger could probably only, you know, supply, well, something less than that, right, at, at 700 volts. So it, it's not gonna be able to provide 500 amps at that higher voltage, it looks like. So I don't know, maybe this is sort of a medium charger. Anyway. Uh, just an interesting site to, to see. Like I said, I'd like to see them maybe work on the order of operations for activating. Um, you know, maybe increase the power a little bit if they if they feel like it's appropriate. Um, but otherwise, yeah, like I said, I, I, I'm really excited to see what EV range is doing. I'll probably check out a few of their other sites uh, in the future. I know they have a few more coming online. Like I said, some of them are in some pretty crucial, very like needed areas. So I'll, I'm, I'm happy to see them sort of supplementing the rest of the public charging infrastructure. Uh, but as it is, I'm gonna need to start heading out anyway. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, are, are you interested in learning more about EV range? Um, what they do, what did you think about that original uh, Recargo site in Prunedale that they had uh, that they had designed? And you know, what do you think about some of these, I guess, upstart charging providers sort of breaking into the market with these smaller, you know, sites, up to date charging speeds though, right? 350 kilowatt or thereabouts. Um, and uh, you know, what impact they might have on the future of the public charging infrastructure. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and uh, thank you for watching.